Today, I got another installment of the iOS developer portfolio review slash critique series. In this series, I take a look at portfolios, give my advice, give my tips, my feedback to hopefully help them improve and make them better and give you inspiration and ideas. And if you like this sort of thing, I think I've done almost 10 of them by now. And I got a whole playlist of this on my channel. You can check that out. Link will be in the description. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. First up, we have a retro Paul, who is a uh, product and UI designer uh, from Delhi, uh, India. So he specializes in UI, but uh, also dabbles in iOS development, right? And the first thing that stuck out to me uh, about this portfolio was I like this green status, right? You see this a lot of times on maybe like productivity apps, but I think this is pretty cool. I haven't seen this before. And I like the fact that you would be updating, I assume you update this, you know, whatever you're currently working on or, or currently doing. So I like that little touch. And then back to the whole, you know, you are a UI designer and iOS developer. I think someone who can design and build is extremely valuable, especially to small teams, like small startups. Cause in a small startup, you gotta wear many hats, you gotta do a lot. And if you can design the app and build the app, like that's a huge bonus. So I like the fact that you are sharing kind of both of those things. Now let's take a look at some of your work down here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So again, to be fair, usually when I'm doing these videos, I'm super zoomed in. That's why this looks so huge because you know, I gotta make sure you guys can see it uh, on the video, but just, you know, for fairness, cause I know he is a UI designer and might think, wow, it's super blown up. That's not how it's supposed to look. Uh, this is what the, you know, overall view of the portfolio looks like just to give you the realistic image. And I'll probably do that for the other ones as well, but back to being zoomed in so you can like see and read. Let's take a look at one of the uh, app kind of layouts and all the pages are laid out the same. So I'm only gonna show you a couple of them, but I like the information he gives here, right? So uh, I see the images pretty much right away again, if I was zoomed out, I would see the images uh, right away. His role, the achievements, nice screenshots, again, multiple screenshots, giving me an overview uh, of the app, but here's the deal. And again, I'll zoom in so you can kind of like read this, even though I'll scroll through pretty quickly, right? Little brief summary of what the app Faith is, what the problem you're trying to solve. Again, I'm getting the story behind the app rather than just, you know, tech specs and pretty pictures. And I like this. The market research, again, this comes into play. So this is showing that not only can you design the app and build the app, but you understand the research that goes behind the user experience and everything. So I'm getting a complete picture uh, here, which is very, very good in my opinion. So again, more information on the user research you know, feedback, all that stuff. And again, I like seeing the prototypes and kind of the reasoning behind the prototypes, right? Again, showing your process is very valuable. Like, yes, it's good to see the, the final pretty pictures, but showing me how you got there and your thought process along the way, again, gives me that complete picture that I think is so, so uh, valuable to learn about you. And again, I say this a lot in all the videos, like the purpose of the portfolio is to earn the deeper look, right? You're not gonna get the job just off the portfolio alone. But what the portfolio does for you is it gets you on the phone call with a hiring manager or somebody from your team. And then once you're on that phone call, it's up to you to impress and take it forward. But the portfolio gets you to that next step. And I think this is doing a great job. Let's look at a, a couple more. I'm, I'll go through the other ones uh, quicker because uh, they're a little bit different, but this, the layout is basically the same. Again, uh, some information, some overview. This one in particular is more on the design side about how you built a UI design system, right? You can kind of see it here. You have like nav bar, tab bar, cards. And we walk through that whole process. Again, that's more of what I talked about, right? These components, right? And I get to see how you chose your fonts, your colors, all the components, right? This is super interesting to me if I'm looking for somebody who can design and build, right? So I see you have experience with the design systems, right? So I see all the components and the pieces, and then now I get to see it all put together. Again, telling me the story, walking me through all that, I get to see the complete process. And then one more, uh, this Nike school project. Again, this I know this is more on the design side than the building side, but again, I think the design side is very important. Um, so again, he's redesigning the app, but I'm gonna scroll down quickly because I know I'm spending a lot of time on this one already. Ready, but what I like to see here is these sketches. So I like to see this not only on the design, but if you're building an app, this is more inspiration for those of you watching. Like again, show your process, show your initial sketches and how you got the, the idea and the iterations, right? Here's what it started at, here's my middle iteration, and here's like the final project. Again, telling me that story, showing me the process, I think is uh, so, so valuable. And then finally with uh, Retro here, back up to the top, we'll go to the, uh, let's check this not work section. So I like this little site because it's more of a timeline. 
Uh, we'll go here. I'll, I'll skim through this quickly, but you see it's a timeline of like what he's been working on in all the projects. And I, and I don't think he built this. It's a site called Polywork that you can kind of put in there. But I, I like this whole timeline look. I get, again, more of the story uh, about a retro here. But back to the uh, site, what I wanted to point out finally, well, again, we got the nice light mode, dark mode, right? Cool. Uh, but the about, right? So I get to learn uh, about him. And I always say this, but I like sharing stuff outside of work, outside of your projects, right? What he's listening to, what he's reading, what he's watching, what he's playing. And what this does is this potentially builds a connection with whoever is researching you or looking to interview you. Uh, you know, I don't play Valorant. I'm currently playing Apex Legends. But if I did play Valorant, I'd be like, oh, cool, we have a connection there. Any connection you can make with your potential interviewer, again, whether it's TV shows, reading, music, video games, any other hobby, those connections you can make are, are pretty valuable as well. So Aritra, overall, I think you got a really good uh, portfolio going on here. Being a UI designer helps making it look nice, but I think you also present the information well. I really like this one. Next up, we have on trend, and this portfolio gives two examples of a lot of the stuff I preach. So the first example is just having a portfolio in general. And I know building a website is tough. That's why I sponsor these videos by Squarespace. They help out with that. But another path for that is, you know, just a simple GitHub profile, right? This is a GitHub readme that he's customized. And the other example of what I always preach is you'll see as I scroll through this, this is an example of showcasing a lot of different types of apps. Like a lot of these are small apps, but you get to touch a lot of different frameworks. Like we have like AR, to-do list, that type of stuff. So again, a wide variety of skill sets here that he shows. So you come down here, a repeatable list shows that it has been featured uh, by Apple in eight different countries. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Uh, and then he shows, you know, the proof, right? You don't just say it, he shows the proof. Uh, well, I guess it's right back up here, right? A repeatable list up there. I'll probably put an arrow there so you can see it. And then I get to see uh, more about the app. I'm gonna have small nitpicks here on, and again, the super small nitpicks, but uh, I would replace these mockups with the more modern like iPhone 12, iPhone 13 squared off look. I know this is super small, but I don't know, the details like matter to me, because to me this already looks dated. I know that may sound silly to say that the iPhone 11 and iPhone X or whatever, or 10 look dated, but ah, with the new design, the, the old design looks a little dated. So I would switch out those mockups. And then the other piece of advice would be to, to be consistent in the mockups. And for the most part you are, um, but like down here in the app clips, right? There is no frame around the app clip. And I know this is a GIF and it is a little extra work to get the GIF inside of a phone frame mockup, but it's certainly possible. And I just think that would add consistency. But I do like the fact that you are showing GIFs in the app in action and you're showing that you can utilize app clips, which are like a new framework. Back to what I talked about showing off a wide variety of skills. To me, this is showing like, okay, this is a new framework. There's not a lot of resources out there, but you were able to pick it up and learn it and implement it in your app anyway. Again, a good sign. So we'll keep scrolling down, uh, make it big. This looks like a, a simple just widget uh, app, custom widgets there. Uh, and then here, like I said, there's no mock-up here around this. Again, just consistency in design, minor nitpick. But I always say this as well, like as a developer, attention to detail is such a big deal in your code base and in your code that, you know, anytime you can showcase that you have strong attention to detail, I would do that. And then I look for things that show weak attention to detail. And to me, those are little minor red flags to me. Again, I'm nitpicking, I'll be honest. Um, but yeah, I would definitely put a mock-up uh, around this. But as you're seeing, we're, you know, now we're in AR with the face. We're, we're showcasing On's ability to pick up new frameworks and learn them. Even if you're learning them at a surface level, still you have the ability to learn new things. That's what this is showcasing to me. And that's what I, I always recommend when you showcase a lot of smaller projects. Here we have camera, the vision framework, right? And doing barcodes. Uh, here we have SwiftUI with haptic feedback. And, and again, so you can see a whole bunch of small projects. We have graphs here, right? Showing you can work with graphs, showing a wide variety of very common iOS developer skills. And like I said, this is all in a simple GitHub readme that is relatively simple to put together. So overall on again, great stuff. I like that you showcase a lot of your skills and uh, again, minor nitpicks on the design. I would put your GIFs in a phone mockup, maybe have a little more recent uh, phone mockups. Uh, but other than that, like I said, you're, you're showing off uh, a lot of different skills very quickly. And I think that's a good thing. Now, like I said, building your own website is tough and this GitHub profile is one way to get kind of a makeshift portfolio going. But if you do want more of that website feel, Squarespace is a great way to help you out with that. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to help you get your iOS developer portfolio up and running very quickly. Now, as developers, we have a tendency to wanna to build the website ourselves because we can. However, you gotta remember, there's an opportunity cost to your time. You're an iOS developer, you wanna be building apps. 
There's a lot of time that goes into building and maintaining a website for all the different browser compatibilities, all the different screen sizes, right? From the iMac to the phone to an iPad. Like it's, it's very time consuming, right? And I don't know about you, I would rather be building apps than making sure my website looked great in all scenarios. And Squarespace can help you out with that too because they have tons of beautiful themes. They handle all the analytics and the SEO for you. Again, it just takes so much off your plate. So when you're ready to get started, go to squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. To wrap things up, we have Peter Jakob here, and this is gonna be a lesson in information hierarchy. Because Peter, I think you have a lot of great individual puzzle pieces, I just think we could put them together uh, a lot better. So first up, here we are on your homepage. Again, we just got your face, your name, and a little bit about you. Uh, scroll down and like, that's it. Uh, to be honest, I think this homepage is a giant waste of time. Uh, I think we can use your about page with it, which I think has a lot of good stuff on it, combine it with your apps page to make that your homepage. All right, let, we'll walk through this, <laughs> stay with me here. Uh, so look at your about page. Uh, well, one basically just repeats everything we just saw there, um, but it, it gives some good information here, right? So you've won some WWDC student awards. That's awesome. Definitely highlight this. I don't know if they have to be giant squares. I think you can highlight that in a much more efficient manner. Uh, and then you have your like description. And again, like I said, I'm always zoomed in on these sites. So to be fair, you know, this is more so probably like this, but even still, and I'm gonna zoom out even more, like more so than usual, so you can see what I'm talking about. So what I think you should do, uh, so again, I'm super zoomed out, is this whole section, right, with your name, your awards, and your description, right, that, see how much vertical space that takes up? I would figure out a way to redesign this, revamp this, let me zoom in here uh, a bit, to like normal size, revamp this so it only takes up like the top half of your like hero section. So condense all that into one. So again, you got your intro, your award, your description, all condensed into the top half of that page. And then before you get to language and developer tools, I would go to your apps. Cause again, if I go back to your about section, I got ahead of myself. Like when I finally get to your apps all the way at the bottom. So again, information hierarchy, put the good stuff, put the stuff that somebody wanting to hire you is gonna wanna see up at the top. But all I see here is like app icons and then I gotta click. So again, if you're burying stuff behind a click, that's just less likely that people are gonna find it, right? Make it easy for the person to find all the good stuff about you. That's the key lesson here. So into your apps here, right? Now I'm getting some, some screenshots, right? And, and what the apps do. So uh, again, I would move this to the uh, about section, which will then be your homepage in my mind, right? So you have your intro and then right under the intro, which again, only takes up the top half of the screen or so, now you have your apps and I see images uh, of the phones and all that stuff. And then you get into maybe your computer languages, development tools, and then your articles, right? Which your articles, I like, because the, the little thing you do with your articles, it uh, looks like you drew these images yourself. And I think that's a nice little creative touch. But again, the articles are always great to, you know, hear the story behind your first app. You've seen that a theme in this video. I talk about telling the whole story, showing me the process. So you do that here. That's great. And then you also have some articles, you know, that show off some code and some, you know, how you can do things. So uh, back to the uh, about page, which again is the, the re layout we're talking about. Again, intro, top half, show me the apps, uh, you know, preferably more horizontally because like on your apps, right, you have them vertically where I got to keep scrolling. Again, it's all about surfacing information to the top. So maybe show the two images like side by side instead of, you know, vertical. So I got to scroll so far. Uh, but again, that would be under, you know, your awards and introduction and then all this stuff. Uh, so again, it's just information hierarchy. You got all the right puzzle pieces in place, um, just kind of putting them together so it's easy for the person learning about you to see all the stuff very quickly rather than having to click a bunch of times and scroll all the way down to the bottom. Uh, it's just not, not gonna work. So the last thing I wanna say, it's gonna sound maybe a little mean, but I think it's a good, valuable lesson. Um, so what you say here about your apps, what makes these apps special? You say, nice, beautiful, gorgeous. And then, you know, I look at these images and I'm not gonna lie, my initial reaction was, are they? <laughs> like, I'm not saying they look ugly, but th that's a bold statement, right? Beautiful, gorgeous. And the reason I think you gotta be careful with this is it gives me the impression of what your bar for beautiful and gorgeous is. And if I'm asking you to build my app, I hope the bar for beautiful and gorgeous is a lot higher than this, right? I have dribble pulled up that you can see, right? And, and I don't think boasting is bad. Just make sure you can back it up, you know? So if your app, you know, I'm just pulling up random stuff from dribble, by the way. If your app looks something like that, I think you can say that, you know, here's another cool looking one. Cool, then you can probably say that, right? This is cool looking too. So I think it's fine to boast, but again, just make sure you can back it up because again, you're setting the bar of like, oh, this is what Peter thinks beautiful is. 
maybe I shouldn't have him, maybe he can build my app, but if, you know, maybe I need to find a designer for sure. So again, I don't mean to say your designs are crappy, just be careful you know, claiming they're much more than they are. Maybe these apps are beautiful when you show me other screens, but all I see are like two buttons, right? Not much going on on these screens. So that's the main lesson. I don't mean to, you know, be mean or anything like that, but the, the lesson here is remember, you're giving off an impression. And the impression I got was, oh, Peter's bar for beautiful and gorgeous is pretty low when it comes to apps. But anyway, Peter, again, I think you got a lot of great individual puzzle pieces. I think we can put them together in a better way. Again, I've laid out your about screen much better and then make that your home screen. Again, because the home screen, kind of a waste of time, right? I just get this and then I got to click and go deeper. Again, you're making the user work. You're making them dig. You're making them scroll. Surface the information, make it easy to find the good stuff. That could pretty much sum up all of these portfolio videos in that sentence, right? And that wraps up today's video. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.